Yesterday was quite a, a special day. Many of you were at Holy Angels Cathedral as Bishop McClory ordained 16 new deacons for the Diocese of Gary. Every ordination is a special one. It's always a special occasion, but yesterday made it even more special when we had the biggest class of these in our diocese history. One of these new deacons, of course, was Deacon Bob, who is still glowing, I can imagine. <laughs> Out of those 16, two of them were transitional deacons, meaning they'll become priests next year, Deacon Yvonne and Deacon Alex, who made the promise of celibacy that they will keep now for the rest of their lives as they prepare to become priests next year. But with all 16 of these men, they prostrated themselves face down on the terrazzo floor as the community prayed the litany of the saints. They knelt before the bishop and received the laying on of hands, which is thousands of years tradition that has been passed down. And each of them was clothed in their new vestments that you can see Deacon Bob is wearing right now. This was the culmination of them over these last few years, slowly having to grapple with the demands of what it means to now become a minister in the church. A deacon is one who serves. And so what Deacon Bob is challenged to do and what he's been challenged to do over these last few years is to think less about himself and more about others. Anytime you enter into some new place in life, whether it's marriage or priesthood, diaconate, into college, you have to think less about yourself and more about others. And so the image that comes to my mind is what we heard in the second reading today. St. Paul says in the second letter to the Corinthians, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. Think about it. Our outer self, what is outside of us, what is on our edge, is wasting away. What is old within us needs to be pushed out so that what is new within us can grow. And when the grace of God grows in your heart, it can push out all that old stuff, all the bad stuff, all the things that make you less of yourself. That's the image that comes to my mind with St. Paul's letter. So right now, I want to give you an image for this. So you see what I'm holding in my hands. This is an egg, okay? This egg has a shell on it still. This egg does not have a shell. This one has been cracked away a little bit. This soft egg is vulnerable, it's permeable, it's malleable, and it's able to expand. It kind of pushes outward. On the flip side, you have this egg that still has the shell on it. It is not vulnerable. It is not permeable. Nothing's going to get through it. It's not malleable. It, it can't be changed. It can't be reshaped. And instead, the force pushes inside. It's always focused inward rather than focused outward. So what St. Paul says is that a soul that is led by Christ has shed its outer shell. It no longer has something that's rocky, crusty, impermeable, thick on the outside, unable to be affected by anything on the outside. Instead, the soul that's led by Christ has shed that outer shell, has gotten rid of what is old, and rid itself of hardness of heart so that it can receive now the grace of God. Ideally, Deacon Bob, this is how you are right now. A very soft heart, a soft outer covering that is able to receive the grace of God. And we trust that over these last few years, whatever outside shell in your heart has pushed itself out so that the grace of God can make it in. Yesterday, we ordained 16 deacons, but last week, we ordained two new priests. So Father Zach and Father Stephen, they are baby priests. <laughs> And so these last few days this week, I was able to spend some time with them right after they were ordained. They were still learning how to celebrate Mass. They still had that ordination glow on them. And you could see that joy radiating from their faces as they thought to themselves, wow, I'm a priest now. I can do this stuff now. And it brought me back to my own ordination as a priest seven years ago when my heart was perhaps a little more like this, 
hopefully it still is a little bit, but a soft outer covering, a soft heart that allows the grace of God to come in. When I felt that I was much more vulnerable in the presence of God and able to receive the grace of God without the demands of priesthood making a crusty shell on the outside. <laughs> Look at a lot of you who are married. You remember many years ago when you said, I do, you remember how soft and vulnerable you are when you handed your life over to that other person. You said, everything I have is yours, everything of yours is mine. You have a soft heart, receptive to the grace that God wants to give you, receptive to the love that the other person wants to give you. But then what happens over time? We can start forming that crusty shell on the outside. Normally, eggs shed their shell, but what happens to our heart? We let the shell grow back on. We form those barriers that prevent us from receiving what God wants to give us and receiving what others want to give us. And instead, we're left with something that's hard and prevents any movement inside and outside. Graduates, ideally, your heart is like this, a soft shell. But I was a teenager once, too. And you know what happens when we were like this when we're real young? We have total trust in our parents. We're totally vulnerable to them. But then life starts to take over and we start to form this crusty shell on the outside that prevents us from receiving that love from them and the grace of God to respond to. You know, why is it that we do this? Why do we go from having a soft heart at one point in our life, which God intended, to something that is hard, like a hard-boiled egg? You can't get through. Nothing's going to force itself into it. Why do we do that? We heard the exact reading in our first, the reason is in the first reading today. Genesis chapter 3. This is not a story about a talking snake. It's so much more meaningful than that because it shows us why we go from having soft hearts to having a hard one. When the man and the woman eat that forbidden fruit, what do they do? Does God come after them and said, I know what you did? No, it says they went and hid. They realized what they did. They hid themselves from God and they hid themselves from others. They had that sin of pride that said, I don't need God and I don't need you. And I don't need anyone to tell me what to do or to help to form me to be a better person. I'm going to decide what's right for myself. And you know what happened? They formed this crusty shell on the outside of their hearts and they went and hid. They realized that they were naked, which meant that they realized that they were now vulnerable and they were afraid of being vulnerable in the presence of God. Kind of how like with married couples, when we're vulnerable at one point, but then we realize we're vulnerable and we don't want to be vulnerable anymore. And we start to form those barriers. When we're kids and we're vulnerable with our parents and we decide at one point, I'm not going to be vulnerable anymore. We form this crusty shell and it goes all the way back to that moment in the garden when our parents decided that they were going to hide from God. And all God wants to do with you and me is to reform this soft outer covering to make our hearts malleable, permeable, and receptive to his grace so that he can shape us and form us into the people that he is wanting us to be. That's what God is asking of you and me today to be open, to let this crusty shell, what is old within us, this outer self, to be pushed out, to be broken, to be slowly that spoon tapping this egg so that you can peel away that crusty shell and be left with something this soft. I've heard it said that we have hard hearts and soft feet. We don't like to get down and dirty. We have soft feet that are not courageous, but we have hard hearts that aren't open to the grace of God. What God wants to do is reverse that. And he wants to give us soft hearts and hard feet. Hard feet that like someone new and ordained like a priest or like a deacon can get down and dirty in the world and serve God with his whole heart, but it's also a soft heart 
It's not a crusty heart that has a shell over it that prevents it from receiving God's grace. It's one that's totally open. The grace of God wants to permeate your heart and mine. The question is, are we going to be open to that? Or do we form shells over it? Deacon Bob, of course, you'll be challenged to continue to let whatever hardness might grow on your heart to be pushed out. Just like in my heart, the hardness needs to be cracked and pushed out. Our two seminarians, Ryan and Gianni, as they were going to learn Spanish this summer, do you think that it's going to be helpful for them to have barriers, hard hearts, hard ears that aren't going to be open? That's not going to work for either of you. <laughs> it has to be a soft one, malleable, able to be changed and receptive to what God wants to give them. Graduates, you're entering a new stage in your life. Wherever you're going to go, will it be helpful to, for you to have a crusty outer shell? that isn't open to change, isn't open to getting rid of what's old. The trick is for you to slowly break away that so that you can have a soft heart that is totally open and receptive to what God wants to give to you. That old self is always wanting to creep back in, that crusty outer shell where we're no longer trusting and vulnerable. But the trick for you and me is to always break that to push outward, not inward, to let ourselves become permeable, not impermeable, and to let our hearts be malleable to the grace of God so that we can always be changed and so that we can truly bring about the change that we want to see in the world. We ask God's blessing upon Deacon Bob, upon you graduates, upon our seminarians, upon everybody here, because today God is asking something special of us. Let's break that crusty outer shell and always lift, live softly as this egg.